Hi there, this is Lisa from K9 Clips, and this is Pepsi, and Pepsi is a long-haired chihuahua. And today we're going to do a full groom on him and um, show you that process that I do. So we're going to start out with the face, feet, and bum. Um, we're going to keep the mane a little bit longer today, and we are going to be doing a scissor cut on the chest just so we could keep a little bit of his mane. Um, so kind of like a lion's cut on the front and then the rest of the body we're going to do a number five. So I just want to show you that. So his fur is pretty nice. He doesn't have any mats. Um, just the type of fur he had. He's a little bit nervous, um, but still a very good boy. So we're just going to start uh, with trimming the feet up. And I'll move him over. So as I groom him just like any dog that I do I don't use any restraints and I never have so I like to just kind of maneuver them around I have them on a raised surface um, on a table that I can move up and down and that kind of helps me to maneuver them as I need to do it and um, because I've been doing it for 15 years I think that also helps um, them to feel a little more com comfortable as well when I'm moving them around even when they are a little bit nervous I'm really confident so it helps them to maybe just relax a little bit and plus they're not being restrained at all so I don't think you require restraints for any dog grooming. I have had a few aggressive dogs. Um, and in those circumstances, I like to just use a cone on them so that they can still have full range of breathing. Because um, the muzzles, I think, are too um, restrictive on them. Um, but they're still able to move around as well. And um, generally, they can be aggressive around their nails. And then once I'm done that, I can take the cone off again. So we're just going to do his nails here. So I've done a video on the different stages of my grooming. So how I generally start is I do the face, feet, and bum when I get them. You know, I'll kind of check them over, see if there's any mats or anything. Um, so I'll start with the face and uh, trim the nails trim the feet, trim around the bum area, and just kind of get a sense of how everything is going there. I'll pluck the ears and um, clean all that out if there's anything. And then if there's any matting in the nail, in the ears or tail, I'll comb that out before the bath. So once I'm done uh, kind of trimming all those areas, I do the bath and blow dry. And then uh, I'll come back and I'll trim the body up with the clippers. And um, basically that, that portion is just trying to get the bulk off. And once I'm done with that, then I kind of give them another quick blow dry to uh, just get that bulk of the uh, moisture off. And then that will then I will come to my final trim, which uh, in that case I uh, do a whole nother body trim and just catch anything that I may have missed. So then it gives it a nice final clean look. And I do have that process broken up into five separate videos that I did on another guy. Hi, Debbie. All right, so we've done the two feet, so we're gonna go to the other side. Get the other two done. And when maneuvering the dogs, um, as you can see, I don't, I still maneuver them, but I'll kind of put my hand under them so I can pull them, um, you know, from the top or the bottom, but just kind of not pulling on their legs or joints because you don't want to ever pull on their joints. Um, and when I'm holding their feet, I'm holding them kind of at the knuckle there. So he's being really good, but there are some dogs that, you know, maybe are a little bit more resistant. So if they pull 
that's okay but i'm not pulling because i want them to you know not injure themselves of course so sometimes they may pull but basically i'm just holding it in place and they kind of hold they if they do choose to pull it's at their own comfort level so that um, it's not going to cause an injury to them Pepsi's like most of the dogs I groom, you know, he's, he's a little nervous, but, um, he's just letting me get it done so that he can get home to his parents. He may not enjoy it per se, but, um, they kind of just tolerate me doing it. My dog is, um, seven years old. And I still have to chase him down when I want to give him a groom. <laughs> I don't know how he knows it, but he can just read my mind sometimes. It's okay. It's okay, I know. And sometimes if the quick is long or just um, they're not happy with you, they'll give you a little yelp. And um, I got one of those nails. That doesn't mean you've, uh, just sometimes they've grown a little longer. So there's the quick stop that I put on. And that just stops the bleeding. And just dip it in there and put some pressure on. It's okay. And that'll stop the bleeding. Okay, come here, baby. All right, so now we'll do the front and last paw. So like I said, we're going to be using a number five on him. His face doesn't require too much trimming, as you can tell, just by the type of breed he is. So I don't have to go in there. And once he gets his bath here, he'll cool down a little bit. Sometimes um, if you're trimming a dog's nails, they can uh, yelp like um, when you cut them. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are injuring them, but that, of course, they don't like it, of course. So they'll do that. And then if you let go and stop trimming their nails, it kind of just reinforces them to yelp sooner because then they realize if I yelp, my owner will let go of me and I cannot have to have this done. So, um, again, it's just um, as long as you know what you're doing and confident, your dog will relax uh, with you. The more confident you become cutting their nails um, and them knowing, you know, that they don't, have, well, even if they do yelp, you're still going to do it, as you can see. And it is common to cut the quick, um, and it does happen. That doesn't mean uh, that it's anything wrong. Um, just sometimes some quicks on some nails grow a little longer than the others. Maybe they're not getting worn down when they walk, and that's just their, how they naturally do it. All right, so and I also um, comb out the tail here. We'll just see if there's anything in there. No, I'm not a fan of the tail comb. Hey, 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 it's okay. All right, so if he's going to nip, just what I do is I just put on a cone, like I said, just so that he can keep breathing. But it just keeps my fingers a little healthy. And I don't have to worry about getting nipped. And um, usually I'll just finish what I'm working on at the time. It's okay. I just got to comb out your tail. I'll just finish up combing out the tail like I was doing. And now he's calmer. 
And that's all I wanted to do, which there wasn't any mats in it, but he must just not like that area being touched. See, now he's calmer. And then I take it off. Good there, good boy. Hey, you're just nervous? Okay. So there we go. So we're going to go into stage two, which is the bath. Which I'll bring you along here. So I do have a raised tub. lower you there we go all right so i do have a raised tub and i do have um a shower head with a long nice cord on it and i also do have my water set to a certain temperature so when i turn it on i turn it all the way up and then i never have to worry about um having the water too hot for the dog i can just turn it all the way up and just get started i don't have to worry about adjusting the temperature to make sure it's never too hot for them. And then for the for the shower, this is my um, <laughs> shampoo bottle. I've used, I, I use a very concentrated shampoo that I've been using the same one for over probably 15, well, just about the whole time. It'd probably be about 12 to 13 years anyways from when I found it. And I just add a little bit into the bottle and that is actually, um, I believe it's a mustard bottle from way back when. And then I use actually a ketchup lid so that when I turn it upside down, it doesn't, um, doesn't spill unless I squeeze it, which the plastic itself is quite soft. And um, I've been using those same bottles for many years, but so it's the harder plastic but it's still very soft, so, um, or thicker plastic, I guess. So it's worked very well for very many years. So if you can get your hands on some of those, they are very good to have. I think maybe uh, in the dollar store with those three packs, or if you can find those three packs of ketchup, mustard, and uh, relish, and then you just use the ketchup top on them. Might work out for you. Yeah, so anyways, we're going to give him a good scrub down. Make sure we get everything. Make sure it foams up a little bit. Sometimes if it's not foaming, I'll just kind of add a little bit of water to it. And then kind of it'll lather up a little bit more. There we go. Get everywhere. All right, so everything's nice and clean, so I'm going to rinse them off. And just being aware of not to get any water in the ears. So when you do go on, on top of the head, you're kind of making sure you're not spraying directly into the ear canal because you want to keep those ears nice and dry. You can do that by covering them and putting pressing down on the ears so that the water won't go in when you're going around the face. And there we go. kind of just wring them out a little bit. I do also have a drain in uh, my tub to catch the hair like that so that I can catch the hair so it's not going down my drain all the time. So every once in a while you'll see me getting the hair out of there. Okay. I kind of just wring them out a little bit what I can get off and let them shake if they want. And then cover them up here. And I'll bring you back. Alright. Then, I'll tell 
I'll dry him off. Just to get the bulk of the water off here. up a little bit so you can see okay and then I'm gonna start the blow dryer so it's gonna get a little bit louder in here for a bit I usually wear earmuffs to catch my ears good for that usually they are a little more oops, sorry more resistant around their uh, face and stuff being blow dried so um, he was actually really good so he's still gonna be a little bit damp and that's just normal but I do start the process of the grooming here um, with the clippers while he is still a little bit damp Sorry, I'll kind of lower you here. I'll move you back so you can see a little more what's going on. Okay, so we are going to use a number five, or sorry, a number seven. And a little bit shorter on the body. And then we're just going to keep his mane, just his natural kind of mane a little bit. I'm going to scissor cut that after. So we're going to just kind of go from from about here is kind of where it naturally you can see it has a little more um, curl on it. So we're just going to kind of poof that up and go from behind. So I'm just going to add a little bit more oil because my clippers are quite making that noise. You can hear that they change the sound when I add the oil to them. All right, so. So again, this is a number seven. And this still leaves a little bit on the body, but it's fairly close cut. I use a skip tooth. Just because I like, um, if there are mats in a dog, it kind of gets them out easy. Um, and I'm able to keep the length a little bit longer than if I were to do a, a finishing cut. And I find, I do trim them twice, so um, once we're done with this initial cut here, 
I do blow dry them again and then I'll come back again and cut them again and then that really cleans it up and finishes it up. I'm just going to also scissor cut the tail just to trim it up. We're going to take all the bulk off with this trim. And I'm not worried about getting it all perfectly uniform. Just trying to take off the bulk. And I'm working around in here. I'm just going to be careful because sometimes you can pull the skin. So you want to make sure that you're catching the fur and not any skin in that area. So I kind of pull it down and then I'll also lift up his leg and go up in there. And I'll only go so far because I'll actually come back um, with a number 10 to finish that off because I don't want to catch anything any skin or whatever that I don't want to because they are split tooth and you can catch with any split tooth or any longer blade so I kind of wait till I'm I'll come back to that and you always check the blades with with them being a little bit damp that helps to keep the blades a little bit uh, cooler so we're gonna leave his mane there Because even if it's a little too much and the owner wants it shorter after, it's much easier just to come back and trim that up a little bit to what they prefer rather than uh, growing it all the way out again. So I always tend to err on the side of caution and then uh, I can always come back even when they're picking up and just kind of trim that off if they want it shorter or less of a main. But they're basically like the, like the whole head, the ears a little bit longer as well. And here I'll go underneath his chest. You can see where that mane is. And I just kind of go behind it so that we still have it. But between the legs I'll keep it nice and short so it'll keep it Keep him a little bit cooler as well, but it still looks like the full mane from the front. And the same with the armpits. There's always that little bit of fur in there. I'll always come back with a number 10. And just get in there with a number 10. Just because, again, when you're pulling up the legs, um, there's usually a little bit of a skin that's stretched out as well and so that could be uh, easy to catch as well with the longer clippers blade so you want to make sure you're going back with a shorter one as well all right so there's the bulk and it's still okay for temperature all right so then you lift the tail up Always be aware of where the bum hole is, making sure you're not catching any of those on them. Alright, and then um, I lift his leg up. And I'll just kind of take a little bit of it off. But now I'm going to come back with the number 10 which is a little bit closer and I still don't have to go right to the skin but it is easier as you can see with the clipper blades closer together like that and I'm not going to catch anything so again I'm not necessarily having to go and uh, go really short in there but 
fairly close. So I'm going to add some more. You can hear the noise, the sound. And when I add the oil, um, it changes just a little bit just to make sure it's uh, moving nice and smoothly. Okay. And I'll mix them up. And get in here. So usually I'll start kind of where the stomach starts. You don't want to do too short because, or too far out, because remember this is nice a little bit longer. So I just want to kind of keep just to those areas. So I'm just going to do just under the armpit. And it is a little bit longer in there. It's a little bit safer to use this number, please. Okay, there we go. That's the majority of the body right now. I'm just going to comb out his mane, just to see what we got. And he was really good at the blow dryer stage, so um, I might not take too much off at this stage. Just because he did stay so good for the blow dryer, I might just try to blow it out rather than trim it. And because um, it will change once it kind of gets drier and drier. so. It's much easier not to take too much out right now and uh, just leave it. So what I'm going to do, since there isn't any mats or anything, I'm just going to do another quick blow dry. And then I'm going to put on my earmuffs. I'll move the clipper oil out of the way. And um, I'll get started here. So it's going to get a little noisy again for you. noticed uh, when I was blow drying I'm making sure I don't get any air directly into the ear canal so I'm pushing it down kind of holding it down so I'm not getting a lot of um, air right into the ear canal because you don't want that um, just in case that could cause some problems so always pulling pushing that down when you're in that area and that goes the same for um, of course when you're bathing as well you're just going to make sure that you have that um, covered up so you're not putting any water in there and then same thing with the blow dryer you're making sure you're not uh, getting a lot of airflow in there direct airflow all right so I'm going to go back to my number seven Let's clean it off here and then I'm going to go do the body once again You can 
see that it takes off just a little bit of fur right now. Even though I've already used the number seven once, I always like to come back and do a second trim. And that really gives me a nice clean cut. It doesn't take off a lot of fur, but after blow drying again, it kind of pulls up anything. And sometimes when it's damp, it can lay down a little bit more as well. Again, just being careful in there, so the skin can kind of stick out. And if there's any wispies or anything, I kind of just pull the hair out with my other hand and use it on the blade like that. Then we're going to keep the, um, the mane. I'm just going around there. I'm going to come back and scissor cut that. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm going to go on the other side. There's always just that little bit that you miss, so it's always good to go back and do a second groom. But especially after the bath, it does change. Okay. Test the blade. Is this starting to get a little bit warm? So uh, I always just like to change them out because why take the chance? These ones are a little quieter, so. That's nice too. Um, when trimming the side body, you want to make sure you're not going up and down because that'll create lines. So you want to kind of go with the body and go along the body line. You can kind of go down when you're lower because you can see that kind of um, just because of the ribs, they kind of naturally go in and under. But when you're on the side, you really want to go front to back. And then, yeah, just clean up the, the ribs and underneath, you can go down a little bit, but still making your motion to the back. Otherwise, like I said, it'll create lines. They're very hard to get out with, without going shorter. So you can, but then you'd have to cut the whole body shorter to get them out. Yeah, so always going front to back. Okay, I'm just going to... So like this here, and then we're going to get on to that mane, which I'm going to be doing a scissor cut on. Just catching any things that I've noticed. All right, okay, so I will get the scissors. I'm going to brush, comb out the mane. I always say brush, but it's actually, I use a metal comb. For I don't have any brushes, actually. I just have combs that I use. I find they're more effective because they get right down to the skin. And they're able to get out any mats if they, they do have any. The brushes seem to just kind of fluff up the top, but they don't actually get down. All right, so I kind of just fluff him up and see where it's at. And uh, the owner still wants it visible, but just clean her up. So 
You always go up and down. Not again, you don't want to go sideways. So I'm not actually cutting, so I shouldn't do that. So you don't want to go this way. You're going up and down or, you know, down to up, I guess. I'm just kind of taking off the fluffies. Anything that kind of sticks out and then I'm going to go up down to get there to kind of blend it. And then you can see, oh, come here, baby. see his ears. I'll oh, just wait. I'll try to turn him a little bit so you can see. There you go. Just kind of how it's rough like that. So again, I'll go from the bottom and just kind of take them out like that. And there we go. And now we have the, the finished look. So that's how you groom a long haired chihuahua with a little bit of a mane, um, with a number five blade, and um, a little bit of a mane left at the end there. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, please let me know if you'd like to see anything else, you can comment and let me know if there's something different you'd like to see. Um, and uh, I'd appreciate that. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a great day. Take care.